Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Combat Sports Digest, the only combat show with teeth. I'm Jim Rotundo, your host for this week's show. Now Scott and I are going to St. Louis for the NCAA Championships, so we're going to give you a classic show, and we're going to do a lot of stuff that was on a show called Hometown Sports that I used to do. And we're going to go into the vault and find something cool. I found a lot of good wrestling highlights from the year 2004 and the year 2005. Let's check them out. The Shamrock Athletic Center at 47 Riverside Drive in Johnson City is the new home for all your family fitness needs. We have everything your family needs to get in shape and stay that way. There's circuit trainers, free weights, treadmills and elliptical trainers. Shamrock Athletic Center also offers aerobics, pilates, plus our host to combat sports training classes. What are you waiting for? Get down to the Shamrock Athletic Center at 47 Riverside Drive and start getting in shape today. Call 644-1190. Pops Athletics wants you to be part of its 2009 Technique and Live Wrestling Camp August 2nd through 5th at Binghamton University. This competitively priced camp is designed to give wrestlers valuable insight on what it takes to be successful at the highest levels of wrestling. You'll work with Binghamton University head coach Pat Papalizio and his staff of counselors to improve your skills both on and off the mat. Camp size is limited, so hurry up and call 607-372-4118 for more information. Today I'm going to talk about Patty. Patty's best characteristics, she's stupid. Stupid and ugly. Everything she does is ugly. Watch her eat. Watch her stuff her face. Look at her. Greasy hair, dirty fingernails. It makes me want to vomit. Get a life, Patty. Thank you. Time? When most high school athletes are on the ball diamond, tennis court, or at the track, these tough guys and girls consider themselves lucky to be on the mats and a part of the Shamrock Wrestling Club based out of Oxford, New York. Founder head coach Scott Green tells us what the Shamrock Wrestling Club is all about. It's a freestyle uh, wrestling club here in central New York that really focuses on um, training athletes in the art of freestyle and Greco-Roman, which is the styles that are wrestled in the Olympic Games and the original styles of wrestling. We also try to you know, help kids with the American style of folk style, which is wrestled in high schools and colleges across the United States. Shamrock got its start in 1996 and currently has four locations for wrestlers to train and are available to them up to four nights a week. In addition to the Oxford location, Shamrock operates at Cornell University, Whitney Point, and Owego. The practices start off with a little running. Then they perform various agility drills, like the ones you see here, to increase their flexibility and balance. Next, Coach Green usually gives the wrestlers some moves to work on. Shamrock's team is preparing for a Greco-Roman tournament, so the emphasis this week is on Greco moves. We worked hard, we pummeled, we battled. What is our number one strategy when we obtain this goal? What's the first thing we should be thinking to do? The wrestlers pair up and work on the various moves, and when they're done with that, they move on to live situational wrestling. 
You're probably wondering why Shamrock teaches freestyle and Greco-Roman wrestling when it's visibly different from folk-style wrestling, which is what high school wrestling fans are used to seeing. Coach Green explains the philosophy behind this. The ultimate goal of our team is to have kids placed at the highest levels of the sport and qualify for the Olympics someday. So I certainly hope that we're trying to build that caliber of athlete now to you know, get to that level, but also all the skills that they learn here, wrestling's wrestling. And you know, if they can pick something up in Greco Roman upper body that can help them in their folk style season, or they can, you know, work on takedowns if that's their weak area. Um, freestyle prepares them, Greco prepares them to become champions in any style. So who goes to Shamrock? Shamrock has a very impressive list of wrestlers in their stable. Among those wrestlers are five-time state champion Troy Nickerson of Shenango Forks, three-time state champion J.P. O'Connor of Oxford, two-time state champion Eric Decker of BGA, and state champion and state place winner Trevor Franklin of Unadilla Valley. Other notable wrestlers in Shamrock include Oxford Steve Loomis, Shenango Valley Scott Dayton, Hancock Deposits Brian Dinehart, Benji Mumbelow from BGA, Scott Fuller from Unadilla Valley, and Tony Copeland, a female wrestler from Oxford. Tony has won or placed in numerous tournaments throughout the country and in the world. She's a junior and is currently ranked fifth among senior women in the country. Tony has aspirations of competing in the 2008 Olympics in Beijing. She tells us what Shamrock's done for her. I'm now competing in senior women levels. I'm nationally ranked, world ranked, and it's just up my status a lot. Three-time state champion J.P. O'Connor of Oxford explains why he started coming to Shamrock and what it's done for him. Uh, I was always competitive um, at a younger age in seventh and eighth grade. Um, I didn't necessarily reach my goals. I didn't uh, win the state titles that I wanted to. And, um, I knew that Shamrock was a great club and I, I wanted to uh, improve and uh, it, it's helped me to uh, rise to the next level as a wrestler and become a three-time state champion. It's just gotten me uh, recognized a lot more on the national level. I've uh, gotten a lot of college coaches interested, and uh, I think it's really just helped me to step up and uh, become the best wrestler that I can be at this time. O'Connor tells you the benefits of joining the Shamrock Wrestling Club. you got guys like Troy Nixon and Eric Decker, you know, multiple time state champs. Um, just about every one of these guys are sectional placers, state placers, really high, high caliber um, opponents and workout partners, and they really take it seriously. I mean, you have a lot of fun, but really take it seriously at the same time, and everybody's just helping each other to improve. The combination of great coaches, great workout partners, uh, it's, it's the best deal around. It's one of the premier clubs in New York State, even the nation. And uh, we're really rising, uh, helping kids rise to the next level and become nationally uh, renowned. According to the team's website, Shamrock is where the average get good, the good get better, and the better become the best. Here's Coach Green on Shamrock's reputation. Shamrock is well respected across the state, across the country as one who produces all Americans and one who has, you know, like you said, a hotbed, a, a, a plethora of athletes that can compete at the Division One level. Um, I think we're, we kind of set a goal as a club to have seven club members next year. We think we'll sign Division One scholarships. If you're interested in joining the Shamrock Wrestling Club, check out their website at www.shamrockclub.homestead.com or contact Coach Green at leprechaun at stny.rr.com. From the Shamrock Wrestling Club in Oxford, I am Jim Rotundo.
hard work. You know, I'm wrestling a bigger weight class, different style of wrestling, but uh, I got good partners in the, weight, or in the wrestling room too. I got good coaches, I got good, just good all around people all around me. Just gotta work hard and do whatever happens, happens, I guess, you know. It's just whoever has a good day, really. Yeah, coaching, a lot of hard work and uh, just sticking with it, you know, perseverance and uh, learning from my mistakes and having fun. Coaches just push you all the whole, the whole time in practice and you know you have to lose the weight and it's tough the whole time, but you know you got to do it to become a champion. We wrestled well. We knew that we had an outside shot of winning and a lot of things had to go right and we performed up to our capability, which is always a good feeling to have as a coach. I'm watching you, Dobson. Every weekend. Tell me! Any way you slice it, this city is rotten to the core. All bets are off. On CSI New York Weekends. We have to find this guy before he gets to those girls. Go behind the yellow tape and see the edgiest cases on television. You missed. The Big Apple bites back. Oh, like shooting little girls. On CSI New York Weekends. Late night, Saturday and Sunday on WBNG TV. Looking for someone to help you reach your health and fitness goals? Marshall Dornick of HealthStrong is your answer. His six years of experience in the field of sports medicine working with a wide variety of athletes make him uniquely qualified to address multiple fitness and health goals. Marshall is also a certified strength and conditioning specialist and a performance enhancement specialist. So whether you're a serious athlete looking to gain a competitive edge or a weekend warrior working toward optimal fitness, HealthStrong can take you there. The Shamrock Athletic Center at 47 Riverside Drive in Johnson City is the new home for all your family fitness needs. We have everything your family needs to get in shape and stay that way. There's circuit trainers, free weights, treadmills and elliptical trainers. Shamrock Athletic Center also offers aerobics, pilates, plus our host to combat sports training classes. What are you waiting for? Get down to the Shamrock Athletic Center at 47 Riverside Drive and start getting in shape today. Call 644-1190. We're at the Harpersville High School for a match between the Harpersville Hornets and the Unadilla Valley Storm that will decide who the MAC Division II champion will be. After UV got a forfeit at 103, defending state champion Trevor Franklin is taking on Harpersville's John Hinman. Franklin dominated the match as you see him using a cradle to get some back points. Franklin won 10-2, giving the Storm a 10-0 lead. We're going to turn the lights on for our 119 pound match between UV's Shane Wilcox and Harpersville's Nate Warner. Warner jumped out to a 2-0 lead in the first period with this takedown. Then he upped his lead to 4-0 with a reversal and held on to win the match 4-3 and to cut UV's lead in the match to 7. The 125 pound match features Unadilla Valley's TJ Brownell and the Hornets' Dave Marble. Marble controlled things from the get go with a first period takedown. Then he turned Brownell over with a half later in the match on his way to a 13 5 victory, which made it a 10 7 match in favor of the Storm. In the 130 pound match, the Hornets' Lewis Hunter basically manhandled the Storm's Justin Anderson. He flipped him upside down and got a pin in 29 seconds. The Hornets are up 13 to 10 now. Next we're on to the 135 pound class where Harpersville's James Forsyth is turning the tide on Matt Radinsky. Forsyth cradled up Radinsky and got the fall in 2 minutes and 14 seconds. The Hornets are up 19 to 10. Bad things come in threes, right? Well, in the 140 pound match, Harpersville's Eric Shirley got the Storm's Dylan Law on his back in the first period. He held him there for a while before getting the pin at the 126 mark to increase the Hornets' lead to 25-10. The 145 pound match 
between UV's Mike Wildenstein and Harpersville's Russell Hunter was a tightly contested match. However, Hunter used these back points to get out in front and he held on to beat Wildenstein 5-3, making it a 28-10 match. The tide turned for the storm starting with the 152-pound match between UV's Gary Duvall and the Hornets' Ron Harrington. Duvall gained the early advantage in this match and went on to win 9-0, cutting Harpersville's lead to 28-14. In one of the tighter matches of the night, it was a battle between quarterbacks as UV's Dave Cappadonia took on Dustin Day in the 160-pound match. Cappadonia used these hard-fought back points and then a last-minute escape to win 3-2 and make the score of the match 28-17. Things are starting to get interesting as we go to the 171-pound match between the Storm's Scott Fuller and Harpersville's John Fedorik. Fuller controlled this match most of the way, but in the third period, he managed to get Fedorik on his back and pinned him at the 5.05 mark, drawing UV to within 28-23 with two matches left. We move to the 189-pound match between Ryan Thompson of Unadilla Valley and Ty Williams of Harpersville. This was close early, but Thompson used these back points to win 5-1 to one to get the Storm within two going into the last match. The 215-pound match featured UV's Ryan Cotter and Harpersville's Chris Lindsay, who was in his first year of wrestling after failing to make the basketball team. I know how he feels as I started wrestling because I wasn't good at basketball. You're probably thinking because of his inexperience, this match is over and UV's gonna win. Well, I'll tell you from experience that anything's possible in wrestling. Lindsay built up a 9-4 lead going into the third period, but Cotter trimmed that lead to 9-8. Lindsay got a reversal in the closing seconds to win the match 11-8 and give Harpersville the Division II crown with a 31-26 win. The Section 4 Freestyle Wrestling Championships were held in Afton recently has featured a lot of our area's finest wrestlers. For those of you who aren't familiar with freestyle wrestling, it's a little different than the traditional wrestling you've seen on the show before. Their scoring differences, the amount of time they wrestle is different, and the thing I noticed first was they don't have to wear headgear. We'll get a more in-depth look into the different wrestling styles and a look at the Shamrock Wrestling Club based out of Oxford on a future edition of Hometown Sports. Unlike the high school sectionals and state tournaments, this tournament is wrestled in a round robin fashion where every wrestler wrestles each other and the one with the best record wins that class. Here is how some of our local wrestlers did. Unitigo's Billie Jean Dill, one of the top 10 lady wrestlers in the country, won the junior 105 pound class. Unadilla Valley's Trevor Franklin, who by the way finished third in the state high school tournament, won top honors in the 125 junior class. Harpersville's Dave Marble, who also took third at the Pepsi Arena, won the 140 pound junior class. In the 152-pound junior class, Unadilla Valley's Mike Wildenstein took second place with Delhi's Jason Wake earning top honors. BGA's Ben Mumbolo took first place in the junior 160-pound class with Josh Wake from Delhi coming in second.
another guy from BGA, Eric Decker, a two-time defending state high school champion and one of the winners of a Hometown Sports Winner Athlete of the Year award, took first place in the 189-pound junior class. Unadilla Valley's Scott Fuller took second place in the 189 pound juniors. And then there's Dinehart. Yes, that's Bryant Dinehart from Deposit Hancock. Well, he finished first place in the 275 pound junior class. Other local results of note include Marathon's Devin Brown placing first place in the schoolboy 100 pound class. Cody Dill from Unitigo placed first in the cadet 98 pound class and PGA's Chris Stafford placed first in the Cadet 171 pound class. Congratulations to all the wrestlers who participated. The tournament was a warm up to the Freestyle and Greco-Roman State Championships held at BCC last weekend. Highlights from that tournament will be on Hometown Sports next week. Thanks for tuning in to this classic edition of Combat Sports Digest. Now Scott and I are going to be back next week with a wrap up from the NCAA Championships. We'll also have an in the gym segment with Marshall Dornick and who knows what else we'll have for you. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time. If you missed Combat Sports Digest, you missed... Don't miss Combat Sports Digest, the only combat show with teeth. Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. on Binghamton CW.